Life in the Vine Ministries. My name is Gianna Stewart from Columbus, Ohio. And as always, we are so excited to have you with us again today for our studies in 2 Peter, Petro, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. But before we begin our review of Lesson 15, I'd like to invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Avino Volcano, our Father and King, we exalt your name above every principality, every power, and every dominion in Yeshua's name. We thank you, Father, for the Royal Kakodesh. For Yeshua taught us in John 16, 13, that it is he who leads and guides us into all truth. And we thank you that you're here with us to lead and guide us in the truths of the epistle of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we said earlier, we completed lesson 15 of the salutation of the epistle of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, our last time together. We invite you to go to the YouTube page that you see there on the screen in order to view the lesson in its entirety. Today, we will begin in our study of 2 Peter, but this time uh, we're going to be looking at chapter 2, verse 20, and this will be our lesson 16. And our focus again will be on Richard J. Baucom's commentary note, which we discussed last week concerning the writer's normal use of epigenosis with the Messiah alone as the subject. Uh, again, if time allows, we will begin our reading. We probably will not go into the actual study of verse 3, but we will uh, go possibly and read verse 3 of chapter 1. So with all of that said, let us get started. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 2, verse 20. We ended our last lesson with a discussion of verse 8, if you were with us, you remember, of Second Peter 1, which was referenced in Balcom's commentary note as an example of the writer's use of epigenosis with Christ, Balcom's words, my words, Yeshua the Messiah, alone as the object. He also referenced 2 Peter 2.20 as an example of Yeshua the Messiah being the object of epigenosis, alone as the object. So what we'll do now, you see on the screen, is let's read 2 Peter 2.20. Um, we'll see here in 2.20 we have epigenosia which is a noun. So let's read the verse. You see it there on the screen in the Greek first. Ega epigonots gontes ta misamata to kazmu in epigonose to kiriu himon kai sotirios iesu christu to toich de palin implantes heton tai Gegonin a tois tai eskata kerona ton protong. And then we have the rough English translation of the Greek text of 2 Peter 2.20. If for having escaped the pollutions world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, in these now again, having been entangled, they are subdued has become to them the last state worse than the first. That is a very rough English translation of the Greek text that we just read at the top. We will now look at um, the World Bible Commentary translation, which we have in Richard J. Balcom's commentary note. 
and he translates it this way for if having once escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Yeshua Messiah Jesus Christ they are again entangled in them and overpowered by them their final state has become worse than the first and we also have here on the screen the net bible translation for if after they have escaped the filthy things of the world through the rich knowledge of our lord and savior yeshua messiah jesus christ they again get entangled in them and succumb to them their last state has become worse for them than their first and that is the net bible translation so we again remember we're looking at Bauckham's commentary note where he is referencing these verses as uh, a possible explanation as to the variant readings of 2 Peter 1 2a and we'll explain that a little bit further here in just a moment as I said in 220 here in this verse we have epigenose which is a noun in the dative feminine singular in the greek personal pronoun construction here that we have confers with bachman's statement that we looked at in his commentary about the writer's use of epigenosis which is a noun feminine singular which he says the writer of second peter has always writes it with Christo as its object and we see it here Christo properly means the anointed one the Christ Hebrew of course uh, in Hebrew and then we have the we understand it as the Messiah so we see the same uh, understanding here in second I'm sorry in first Peter chapter 2 20 as Bachman has stated, with um, Christo or Yeshua the Messiah being the object of the epigenose in this verse. Remember, we're talking about the variant readings that you see to my right here on the screen, the variant readings of the text in 2 Peter 1 2 that we find in the various manuscripts and we some lessons ago looked at the papyrus 72 manuscript of second peter 1 2 and you see that to my right there on the screen we will recall that what he taught us was that, that in these manuscripts we find totheo kai yesu being omitted and again he's referencing two reasons why that may be so and in this case, we're looking at the fact that, or I should say, we're looking at an example of um, here that Christo is always used as the object of epigenose or epigenosis. So let's take another look at it, just if you, so that if you were not with us, you will kind of catch what we're talking about. So let's go back and we'll look at what we talked about about these variant readings in second peter 1 2 a and it will help you to understand stand we've moved to another example uh, that we looked at in our previous lessons we did look at second peter 1 verse 8 so now we're looking at second peter but now we've gone to chapter 2 verse 20 for this particular example so we'll go and take another look at uh, what we're speaking of here with the variant readings so that we can understand before we move forward, okay? So here now what we're going to do is just briefly remind ourselves of what we looked at in 2 Peter 1, 2 in several lessons back where we learned from Bachman's commentary notes um, couple of possible explanations as to why 
to the Ochai Yeshu to Kuyu is omitted in variant readings of the Greek text. And we looked at 2 Peter 1 2 a in Papyrus 72. And so here on the screen, we're just going back to this explanation so that as we're looking at 220, which is another explanation as to why um, that phrase is omitted in the variant text was because in the 220 that the writer of Second Petros chapters 1 and 2, or the writer of Second Peter uh, in, in its entirety, always uses Yeshua the Messiah as the object of Epigenose in Second Peter 1, 2 and Second Peter 2, 20. So we remember that we learned in Papyrus 72, the detailed variants read this way, and we see them here on the screen. In Second Peter 1, 2, God come our Lord Jesus Christ, making reference to the Christology as we read about in a lot of Shaul's writings, high Christology writings, the high Christology that Yeshua is God. So here we see it with the omission of to theo chai yesu to kurio being omitted. It brings into focus the understanding of the Christology of that Yeshua is God. We also looked at another a variant, detailed variant reading of uh, Second Petros 1, 2. The God, Jesus, Yeshua, the Lord of us, is another variant reading. And then we look at Second Peter 1, 2, the B portion, where it would read just Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, and the Synapticus. So we look here to our left on the screen as you see the actual English translation of the Greek. Well, we can read the Greek again here just to give us a little more clarity here. The Greek of 2 Peter 1, 2, we're looking at, right? Karis, himin, kai irene, palethete, in epigenose to the okai, yesu to kiryu himon. And so we have the wooden again is grace to you and peace be multiplied in the knowledge of God and of Yeshua, Jesus, the Lord of us. And remember, we looked at that and through the um, link you see here on the screen. Then we have the net Bible translation of that verse. May grace and peace be lavished on you as you grow in the rich knowledge of God and of Yeshua our Lord. And then again, we have the world, um, the WBC translation, Richard J. Bochum, may grace and peace be given you abundantly in the knowledge of God and of Yeshua, our Lord. So that's just to give you um, what we looked at prior to us discussing 2 Peter 2.20. So now we together can kind of see where we are Please go to the YouTube webpage so that you can get the full discussion of what we talked about in these verses. Okay, so now what we'll do is we will go back to where we were um, in 2 Peter 2.20, okay? Now this brings us back to 2 Peter 2.20 which we referenced earlier. And it is the discussion of this lesson. So in this verse, 2 Peter, 2 Peter 2.20, just as we saw in verse 8 of 2 Peter chapter 1, which was referenced in Balcom's notes, in his commentary notes, as an example of the writer's use of epigenosis with 
Christ, Bakum's words, Yeshua the Messiah, my words, alone as the object. And we just went back and looked at the reason we're looking at it because he's uh, mentioning why the variant readings, again, we'll just repeat it, omit to theo chayesu, just so we can see where we are. And so now what we're looking at is 2 Peter 2.20, and we've already read it in the Greek and we looked at the English translations. So as we focus here now, uh, we see the same here in 2 Peter 2.20. We see again an attributive genitive specifying the attribute, the innate quality of the epigonose in this verse. We see again that the Messiah follower in this verse has gained upon embracing Yeshua as Lord as the son of God, the son of David, the promised Jewish Messiah, it is through the knowledge of him that they have escaped the pollution of the world and have received eternal life. Remember we read, if we look at it in the English text, English translation, let's just look at uh, the WBC translation. For if having once escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge, Epigenose, of the Lord and Savior Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overpowered by them. Their final state has become worse than the first. What we can see here clearly, even in the English translation of the Greek text, is that the Jewish uh, Messiah follower of Yeshua in this text, this context here, has escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge that they have received of Yeshua the Messiah. And as Gentiles being grafted in Romans chapters 9 through 11, we have the same. Now remember in our last lesson too, we talked about that through this knowledge also, these are my words, not from the commentary of Bauckham, that we have received eternal life, Yohanan 20 to 31. You might want to look those up on your own. Also, Yohanin 5.13, this is John, 1 John 5.13, and then of course John, the first one was John 20.31, and I'll say them again, 1 Yohanin, 1 John 5.13, Yohanin 17.3, John 17.3, that it is through hearing the good news of the gospel and embracing Yeshua HaMashiach as Lord and Savior that we enter into and we have received eternal life. Now, as we go back to Bauckham, again, Bauckham refers us back to his note as we looked at 220. He referred us back to his notes that we read in several lessons prior to this one on page 170, his notes that he referenced on 2 Peter 1, 2. I will just kind of um, summarize those notes rather than to go back to that page uh, just for the sake of time. But from those notes, we learned that the knowledge in verse 2, remember we looked at 2 Petros 1, 2, and so the knowledge that we learned about in verse 2, epigenosis, that we received is decisive knowledge of Adonai. Decisive knowledge of Adonai, which is implied 
Here's Bachman's words. He uses the words conversion. In other words, this decisive knowledge in Bachman's word brings us to conversion. In my words, it brings us to embracing Yeshua as the son of God, the son of David, the promised Jewish Messiah, the savior of the world. Now just take a minute and think about that. It is the knowledge of him that we hear through the preaching of the good news of the gospel that brings us into this decisive knowledge of who he is. We also learn from Bachman's commentary notes, as he cited various scholars on verse 2, that sometimes at least he says, the prefix epi, epigenosis, epigenose, has an inceptive force. That is, he says, it denotes coming to know. In other words, that we get, as we prayed earlier when we started, that it's the Ruach HaKodesh that reveals and opens our understanding uh, we read that also when we read in the, the account of Yeshua speaking to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. It's like he opens our understanding and we begin to see and the inceptive force of that knowledge brings us into a revelation of who he is and then we embrace him and begin our journey. We can also, if you want to make this note in Yohanin, John 17, 3, 20, 31, 1 Yohanin 5, 13, we've just said it, we speak of the eternal life we receive. And, and, the, and so with that, we come to know the one true living God, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua the Messiah, Hashem Adonai. Through our hearing the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God and his Messiah, which we know we could read, you one might want to read Romans 10, 9, and 10, 10, I'm sorry, we come into the epigenosis of who he is. And as Bachman so wonderfully states in his commentary notes on, on verse 8, we went to page 188 in his notes. He states that the, the epigenosin of Yeshua, our Lord, the Messiah, is the root from which our moral progress proceeds. Remember, we went back and we read uh, in the verses, and I'll just read those to you here so that we can reference that. As we go into, let me just turn to that here so that we can have that verses to remember here. As we look at verse three, I'm just going to read this briefly, but what he was referencing there is that it is through, um, it is through the epigenosis that we receive it is the root which causes our moral progress to proceed. So we look at um, 2 Peter 1, and I'm just going to read verse 3 here. Uh, we will not get into it into detail, but I will read it. It says, His divine power has bestowed on us everything necessary for a good, godly life through the knowledge of Him who called us by his own glory and might, by means of which he has bestowed on us the very great and precious promises so that through them you may escape the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire, desire and become sharers of his divine nature. For this reason, for the reason that I just read to you in the English translation in verse three. These are the moral 
progression that Bachman made reference to. And he's saying that the root of this moral progression is that it is through the epigenosis, epigenose, the knowledge of God. It is the root that produces these. Not just the hearing, but by being in him produces what we're going to read here in verse 5. For this very reason, make every effort by your faith to produce virtue, by virtue, knowledge, by knowledge, self-control, by self-control, steadfastness, by steadfastness, godliness, by godliness, brotherly affection, and by brotherly affection, love. I'll read eight. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they keep you from being idle or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yeshua Messiah, my words. And so he's saying that the root of this progression and being able to make this effort uh, by your faith to produce these virtues is rooted in the epigenosis, the knowledge that we have, the inceptive knowledge we have of him and being grafted as a Gentile into the root of this faith, trust, pistis that we have in Yeshua Messiah to do this. Now, remember, we also, to help us understand this progression and this pistis, this faith, this trust, we looked at um, Teresa Morgan's statement in her book, Roman Faith and Christian Faith, Pistis and Fides, in the early Roman Empire and early churches. We looked at her chapter on pistis as it relates to Romans and Philemon. Because remember we said in Romans 10, 9, and 10, it is through hearing this good news of the gospel and then receiving this inceptive force of it that is enables us to produce these uh, progressive virtues here through the divine power that has been um, bestowed upon us. And so, and we looked at her notes on Pistis and Romans and Philemon, she referenced and shared with us, and I'll read it here, it says, this Pistis produces, according to Shaul's, Paul's sense of Pistis, trust, loyalty, and active obedience. A relationship of slavish obedience to Yeshua the Messiah. And we learned that from page 282 of her book. And this is in reference to Romans 10, 9, and 10. It is through this hearing of the decisive epigenosis of Yeshua. Now, we're not speaking of her book anymore. I'm just sharing with you now what we glean from Bachman's notes. It is through the hearing of the decisive epigenosis of Yeshua as Lord and Savior that we are delivered from the power of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of his dear son, no longer under the dominion of the God of this world. Where did we learn that? We know this from Colossians Chapter 1, verse 13. In Colossians 2, 6 through 15, we learn that we are alive now in Messiah. And we can also learn this in Colossians 3. We learn this, that we are to put on the new self. So what we're saying is we're painting a picture for us here through the scriptures, through the word of God, that it is through this inceptive force of the knowledge of who God is, Yeshua in God. We learn that it is the, he, Yeshua is God, and that is through being, being a partaker of his divine nature that we are able 
to one, as we see in verse 220, to escape the pollutions of the world. We see that it is through this inceptive knowledge that we are now in him and we're alive in the sight of Yeshua. And that because we are partakers of his divine nature that we see here in 2 Peter 1, verse 3, that we are able to produce fruit. We also read it in Galatians and Ephesians because we have put him on the new self here in Galatians 3. All talking about the epigenosis. And now we're moving forward to see how is this applied in my life as a Messiah follower. We learn the same biblical truths about our new self in Messiah, as I just said, Ephesians chapter 4, 17 through 32, Galatians 5, 16 through 25. And we can see that it is through this being a partaker of his divine nature that we progress and we produce fruit in Messiah. We are exhorted through the word of God, and we all know this, that we are to produce this new life, this godly life, so that not only is it just so we can say we're producing it, but that the world may see that Yeshua has come. This godly life we learn about in verses 5 and, and I'm sorry, 5 through 7 of 2 Peter, it is possible through his divine power that has been bestowed upon us. And we saw that in verses three through four. Always remember too, that it's not something that you can produce, but it is because of the hearing of the decisive knowledge of the good news of the gospel, and then partaking of his divine nature that we are able to live the life of Yeshua Messiah through the Ruach HaKodesh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and 3, in the world that we have been left here to be light in. And so what are we saying? The text of 2 Peter 2.20 clearly states that we, as well as the uh, Jewish Messianic Messiah followers that were spoken to in 2.20, that it is through the decisive knowledge of Hashem, of Adonai, God, with its inceptive force, brings us into the kingdom of God through Yeshua. And that it is through the epigenose, the knowledge that has re we've received through hearing the good news of the gospel, it's delivered us and the Jewish Messiah followers from the pollutions of the world and the powers of darkness. And we have been transferred into the kingdom of his dear son from the dominion of the gods of this world, Colossians 1.13. And that it is through this knowledge that we're, we're able to be kept as Jewish Messiah followers from apostasy in the world that we live in. So let's end by reading this verse again. And remember that we have the power through the knowledge of him, through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, that we can live free from apostasy. And we have been transferred out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we are now new creatures in Yeshua Messiah. Let's read the verse again before we end. Second Petros chapter two, verse 20. I'm going to read it in the WBC translation. If for if having once escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Yeshua Messiah, they are again entangled in them and overpowered by them, that's speaking of the apostasy there. If that happens, their final state has become worse 
than the first. May you be encouraged, my dear brothers and sisters, that through the power, the authority of the, of the word of God, and through his life in you, you are a new creature in Yeshua Messiah, that we have the power and we have the authority in his name, that we do not have to end up in a state worse than the state we were in before we heard the good news of the gospel and we embrace Yeshua as son of David, son of God, the savior of the world, the Jewish promised Messiah. And now we have his divine nature in us that we can overcome. I hope this was encouraging to you as it was to me. I encourage you to stand firm in the life that you have in Yeshua Messiah and the power and authority of his word. And until we meet again, may you be encouraged in Yeshua's name. Amen. End of lesson 16. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. It, it means a lot to us to know that you've joined us and that we're learning together as we're growing and becoming light in the world, um, this world that Yeshua has left us in. And so we can always grow and be made strong through the study of his word. So thank you again for being with us. In our next lesson, we will look at uh, 2 Peter 1, 3. We'll actually will um, take time to read that verse and do the same thing we've done in verses 1 and 2 and study through Bachman's uh, commentary notes on, on that verse like we've done in verses 1 through 2. If you would like to know more about Yeshua, his kingdom, and his kingship, we encourage you to please email us at lifeinthevine at earthlink.net. Lifeinthevine at earthlink.net. Uh, we are here to pray for you. If you have any questions, if we can answer them, we will. If we can't, we will definitely get with our others of our community and our family here at Life in the Vine and some of my other uh, friends and Messiah followers in various places, we will definitely get the information you would like to have. We also would like to pray for you if you uh, are looking at embracing Yeshua HaMashiach as the son of David, the son of God, the, the Shalom, Hoshiana, the savior of the world. We invite you to please give us a call and we would love to pray with you. We also invite you to uh, visit our YouTube page uh, so that you can listen to some of our previous lessons. Uh, we also have some devotionals on that page uh, as well as some songs that Adonai has blessed us with to be able to share with the body of uh, Yeshua, the body of Messiah. So again, my name is Gianna Stewart with Life in the Vine Ministries in Columbus, Ohio. Thank you again for being with us and we will see you the next time together. Before we close, let us pray. We thank you, Avino Volcano, Volcano, our Father and King, for this time we had together. We thank you for each one that was with us today, that you will continue to strengthen, encourage, bless them, strengthen their families. And above all, Father, we praise and thank you that you will draw those who do not, have not embraced you yet, that you begin to draw them unto yourself. You said in your word that no man comes to the Father except through you, Yeshua. And so we just pray that you will begin that process and you will draw uh, them to yourself. We also thank you, Lord, that where the eyes of those who do not know have been blinded, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, that you will begin to open their eyes and that they will see the Lord and open their ears that they will hear the good news of the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach. 
the son of David, the son of God, the savior of the world, that they will hear it and they will come to embrace you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next time. Shalom. Bye-bye. Thank you.